Hey everybody, it's Scott from the riffle.blogspot.com here to do another tying tutorial. The fly tonight uh, that I'm going to do is a pretty basic fly. It's actually just a woolly bugger variation. It's a color combination that I like to use in the fall. Um, it's uh, got browns and greens and it's kind of a mottled color. It, I call it the mushroom and Swiss bugger. Um, I'm not sure if fish think it looks like a... Um, small brown trout or some other kind of uh, small bait fish a uh, sculpin or something like that but um, they really seem to love it I like to cast it upstream and across uh, maybe uh, you know just slightly upstream uh, mend my line a, a couple times get it to sink a little bit and then as it's swinging down below me uh, start to strip it in in sh sharp short bursts and uh, the fish really um, can attack it voraciously so I had a great day with it about a week ago um, over in western Wisconsin and so I just thought I'd tie one up for you I've got a mustad uh, 5263 hook in the vise this is a size 8 I've already got a uh, bead um, mounted in the, on the hook shank there it's a black brass bead you can use black um, copper brass any color would would work. I like black. I think it looks good. Uh, next step, I'm going to put some lead wire on here. This is I don't even know what size this is, but uh, generally, let's see, it's it's uh, 0 0.015 inches. Generally, you try to match the um, diameter of the hook with the diameter of the lead wire. Get that in focus there a little bit better. There we go. So I will just start here towards the back of the fly and I'll put, oh, I don't know, 10 to 12, maybe a few more wraps than that on there. Just pinch that off on both ends. And then when I, uh, whenever I put lead on a fly with a bead, I just like to jam it up in there. Keeps the bead in place, um, gets all the weight up towards the front. I'll start my thread now and uh, this is just some dark brownish gray ADOT unithread that I will start right behind the lead there and I'll just cover up the back part of the hook with a nice thin layer of thread. I'll bring it back to right behind the lead. First thing I put on here as far as materials go is uh, marabou tail. Uh, for my mushroom and Swiss bugger, I like to use this uh, stuff from Spirit River called Model Boo. You can see that. Um, I'm not sure what kind of a bird this comes from. It's uh, a really cool color variations in here. We got some yellows, some oranges, some browns. It's uh, really pretty cool stuff. So that's uh, what I use for my mushroom and Swiss bugger. So I'll take a nice clump of this, trim it off the stem there, and try to get it all clumped together. And I want this to be about the length of the hook shank, maybe a little longer. So let's kind of eyeball that. That looks pretty good. Once I figure out the length, I will move that into position back there and then hold on to it nice and tight with my left thumb and forefinger as I tie it in right behind the lead. And then I'll hold on to it as I work my way back. That ensures that it stays on the top of the hook shank as I tie it in. And then I'm going here, right behind that lead, and trim off the excess. And I can just kind of cover that up. If I tie it in right behind the lead, it should ensure a fairly even underbody diameter here as I um, fill in the hook shank there. 
Next thing is to tie on some copper wire. This is just a regular brassy sized copper wire. I'll just tie that in right on top and hold on to that as I tie it in all the way back to the tail. And just let that dangle off the back there for now. Now the body, it's uh, just a chenille body just like on every woolly bugger. But this is some brown and olive mottled chenille. And I will prepare this the way I do all my chenille when I'm tying woolly buggers. Just to rip off some of the fibers on one end. Just to uh, reveal just the thread there in the middle. Tie that in right in front of the tail. That keeps the bulk down underneath the body as well. And move my thread up to the front. Let's see, I just remembered I forgot I didn't get my hackle out yet. Let me try to find that. There we go. Okay, so next up is just to wrap this chenille forward to create a body. So I, my thread is right behind the bead. I'm just gonna wrap this forward, try to have it as evenly wrapped, just one one wrap in front of the other, make a nice even body and come all the way up to right behind the bead. Just throw my thread over that a few times here and that's tied in. So we've got a nice mottled olive and brown chenille body there and the tail is mottled, the model boo stuff. Uh, looks pretty good so far. <clears throat> okay, now the hackle on this uh, mushroom and Swiss bugger is actually Cree. Cree is a mix of brown and grizzly. Uh, it's very revered for um, when you're tying dry flies. It's a good, good color for uh, tying atoms and stuff. You only need to use one feather that way. So people like to um, use Cree for that. I uh, I like to tie my atoms with a brown and a grizzly. I think it looks a little better. So I pretty much I bought this Cree cape and I've only been using the bigger feathers for this fly, this woolly bugger. So I've got, uh, got a nice sized Cree hackle here. We'll get it ready by snipping off the butt end and getting rid of all the fuzzy stuff. And then I always, whenever I tie in hackle, I prepare it by trimming off the fibers on the butt end and leaving little nubbins there for the thread to grab onto. On a woolly bugger, I like to tie it in this way. I want it to be curved to the left. All feathers have a natural curve. Once you figure out the curve, you want it to be curved towards the left or towards the back of the fly if you're right-handed. I'm just going to lay that across the top of the hook shank right behind the bead. And I'm just going to tie that in with several nice tight thread wraps. You can go in here, trim off the extra excess stem. And a few more wraps. Then I will take my feather one wrap right behind the bead. Next wrap, angle it backwards and space it out a little bit. There we go. Make your way back towards the tail. Once you get back there, I'm just going to hold that feather straight up. Grab it with my left thumb and forefinger. Reach around with my right hand and grab my copper wire, bring it up and over right behind the body in front of that tail and that traps, you want to trap down that hackle back there. Then I'm going to weave my way forward, try to space those out, Try you weave it through the hackle so that you don't mat down the pretty hackle that you just wrapped. Get up here to behind the bead. And I'll tie 
that off with a few thread wraps and get that hackle back sweep swept backwards there and I'll just throw a few more thread wraps over that looks pretty good now I'm just going to uh, wiggle this wire off to break it off right back there just pops right off saves my scissor tips from trimming too much wire and I think it leaves a little um, a little hook on the end of the wire so it's less apt to pull out from the thread pull out my uh, my thread about four or five inches here and I'm going to do my Mattarelli whip finisher right behind the bead finish that off, trim my thread Yeah, I'll go back in here and with my scissor points trim out that hackle tip from the back, try not to trim your tail and our mushroom and swiss bugger is finished Let's zoom out a little bit and you can see that a little bit better it's a great model look the fish love it, especially in the fall it seems like to me and uh, I think it's a great addition to your bugger box. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.